Getting a doctor's appointment is like getting an appointment with the Queen. What I didn't expect is that it would be marijuana. The original is always better. You guys love Harry Potter. <laughs> also, New Year's Eve is not the biggest, like it's not very good here. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Yvette and I moved to the UK two and a half years ago, almost three. This is, I'm documenting my experience, um, British lifestyle and travel. So as I've been here a fair while and I feel like also the pandemic aged us all, um, I wanted to do a video about my expectations and then the realities of moving. Um, so what did I expect and then how, um, what was the, you know, reality? Good, I'm explaining, it's not that hard. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Believe it or not, I haven't been filming that long, so I've, I'm more delusional than I should be. <laughs> um, but yes, I think the concept is not as complicated as I'm making it. But yeah, um, basically what did I expect and, and what was my life when we moved here. Um, and hopefully if you're planning to move, um, that will be helpful for you to prepare for so you have less culture shock. And if you are from the UK, you can view how you're perceived abroad, which I think is always interesting. I try and find that for Australians. Tell me in the comments below, what do you think Australians like? What's our reputation? You know what I mean? So like Brit's reputation is like, very polite and drinking tea, things like that. What's the Australian stereotype? Am I it? I wanna know. Number one, expectation. And now this is things that were told to me, okay? So don't come for me. Um, the reputation and the expectation of moving to the UK was that the food would be terrible. Although I personally love a beige tapas. I love me a pie, I love a sausage roll. Um, but yes, they're not known for their seasoning or their flavor. Um, everyone talks about how bad British food is. I've never particularly believed into it too much. However, my reality is not so much, well, yes, number one, British food is not that bad, but I love a pastry. So like, I was already not gonna find that the case. But what did surprise me was the amount of options of food, um, particularly in London, uh, but most places in the UK I've gone, like you can, it's not, you're not limited to like British food, even though it's fine. Um, if you did come to the UK and you were like, I hate meat and I hate pastry, I think you'd be okay. Because there's always Chinese, there's always Thai, there's always Indian, there's always pizza, there's always something, you know, and by the way, pizza, Itali um, Brits do pizza so well. It's like, I don't know, probably got some Italians in the audience being like, oh no, I was gonna say sacre bleu, that's French. Good cultured. Um, but yes, the, Pizza here is amazing. Um, but yeah, there's just so much diversity in the food. Firstly, British food as a concept, I think due to globalization isn't a thing. I think there's so much food options here that the food is amazing. The food in London is like uncompromisable. Like I think there's just so much good stuff everywhere across every cuisine. You could get anything you ever wanted. Like pick the most obscure country in the world and there's probably that restaurant somewhere in London, you know? like. Uruguay, what be that one? A Venezuelan restaurant, there'll be one in London. Like Costa Rican restaurant, there'll be one. You know, so the food is one good, two so much more diverse than I could have ever expected. So that was my culture shock. I think I've gone about two to three videos without mentioning it by now, but you know I love to chat about the weather. <laughs> the expectation is that the weather is very bad. And Brits say this, I was reading a Reddit forum this morning and they were saying it too. And I'm like, guys, it's not that bad. So yeah, I was expecting uh, it to rain all the time, particularly in the winter months. I was expecting it to rain every day. Um, that's not the case. And I looked it up. It gets the same amount of rainfall as Sydney and it actually gets less rainfall than Melbourne. Um, the difference is, I think it's like in Sydney anyway, I can tell you. They get like a month's worth of rainfall in like 10 minutes, <laughs> which is like, flash flooding, ripping out the ceilings, gutter overflowing, all that sort of stuff. All that fun. Um, we're in the UK, it's a bit more like drawn out. Um, so you probably have more rainy days or something, but like less rain overall. Um, I will say the stupid weather app is like, it's gonna rain today. And then you live that day and you're like, it didn't rain. And they're like, oh no, it did rain. It rained at 3 a.m. for 10 minutes when you were asleep. And I'm like, did that warrant the little rainy symbol on my phone? <laughs> Anyways, so yes. The weather's not bad. Firstly, I love how pleasant it is. Summer, 20 to 30 on average. Sometimes you get higher, 36, but on average, most days they fall into that. That's lovely. That's enjoyable. You can enjoy the weather. 
you can go for a picnic, you can go to the seaside, you can do whatever you want to do and it doesn't hinder you. I come from somewhere that like there's literally a season, like winter, summer, fire season. Like <laughs> it's like you can't go outside. One, the air pollution, two, you're gonna burn. <laughs> like from the sun, the floor, the fire, like you're gonna burn. So I truly enjoy the summer here. Now the winter, I will confess, the light gets me, um, particularly January. January truly is horrible. Um, December is like the shortest day of the year, but you get Christmas and you get Christmas lights. So I'm, I'm allowing it because I like a fairy light. Um, however, um, yeah, January is like short days, very rainy and um, nothing happening. <laughs> also, New Year's Eve is not that big a, like it's not very good here. <laughs> um, but yes, so my expectation that the weather would be worse. I thought, even in the winter, to be honest, like you get, to, to, it's all, it's November when I'm filming this, still like blue skies most days and like not everything's muddy, which it should be. I think we've had quite a dry warm, autumn, winter time. Uh, but yeah, so it hasn't rained that much. I know this summer was not particularly good, but it still wasn't that bad. Do you mean it wasn't that bad? I've been to Iceland in winter, in their summer, sorry. I've been to Iceland in their summer that was a high of 12 degrees. Like that is not great. <laughs> so I'll take the su south of England. I know Preston and like the north of England and Scotland gets quite rainy, um, which I will contest. Perhaps your experience is, is different to mine. But yeah, the for me, the weather was better than I expected, particularly in London, because it's like quite hot because of all of the tarmac. So something that happened uh, like in 1996 or something, whenever Diana died, what was presented to the rest of the world was that you guys love the royal family. You stand out, you stand next to the road, you got your flags, like everyone, like they come out on their balcony and wave to you. Like that's, that's the image that's portrayed globally. And then I moved here and most people do not care. <laughs> like, I don't know anyone that like is a fangirl or fanboy of the royal family. Do you know what I mean? Like they're all either impartial or kind of against it. <laughs> like no one's like, I don't know anyone that would stand out there with a flag. I'm guessing they're like, they're obviously, there's always fans to anything. Um, but I just, the expectation is that everyone was like that and that everyone liked the royal family. Kind of like, is it North Korea or something where they've got to have a picture of King Jong-un in their house? Like that's, not that it was forced and that negative, but it was kind of like, every, like the attitude was everyone wants to have a photo of the queen in their house. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely not the case. Um, but yeah, so it was a fun expectation versus reality. No one really cares about the royal family. <sighs> My expectation uh, before coming to the UK was that Brits like to drink and they like to drink frequently and a lot. And you know what? The reality is that's correct. <laughs> and that's from an Australian. Um, I made the mistake on a Friday of being like, oh, I'll just pop into a pub and like sit down and wait for my partner to come join me. You think I could get into a pub at five o'clock on a Friday? Absolutely not. Everyone, this was now, this was like during pandemic times. Everyone in London getting after, after, drink, after work drinks. Crazy. Um, yeah, super funny <laughs> to me anyway, is that, yeah, just the sheer, yeah, it's just such a thing. I will say one thing I think is different here to Australia, because Australia obviously has a big drinking culture as well, so I'm, I'm familiar. Uh, in Australia, they did a study, so this isn't me just talking at my bum like most of these videos. They did a study and they said the number one thing you can say to someone in Australia to ostracize yourself and create like uh, a fractured relationship was to say that you don't drink at, like, at all. If you say you don't drink, that automatically puts on like the alarms to people and they like start treating you differently and acting odd. Um, I don't find that the case here. I could be wrong. That was an actual study in Australia for Australians. Um, I don't know if they've done one here. I haven't read it, but um, I know if you don't drink here, people are kind of just like, okay, like they don't really care. Whereas in Australia, it's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> so that was a fun, fun difference, fun surprise. Park culture. Um, I, in Australia, parks to me, in my experience have been mostly seen as dangerous. Like you could, picnics aren't really a thing. They just like think parks are just things to look at or maybe take your kid or your dog there, like that's it. Whereas park culture in the UK, specifically London, is like people love a picnic, they like to meet friends there of all age groups. You could be like two years old or like 82 years old and like you're in a park. Um, and I love, I love park culture. It looks very idyllic, it's beautiful, green. I think a lot of it's got to do with the grass is actually nice here, <laughs> which is why. Um, 
you guys enjoy it more. In Australia, there's these thing called bindis. I know they call it bindis here, but that's a different thing. Bindis in Australia are like little thorns in the grass. So you would never ever go step barefoot on grass you didn't know, because <laughs> you'll probably get needles in your feet. Um, so yeah, you would never have a picnic because it's all sharp and hurts. <laughs> so we're here, it's very soft and lush. So I think that, that adds to it as well. But um, I underestimated the people's appreciation of parks. I think the reason I've loved the UK as long and as deeply as I have is largely due to Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter, that's what I grew up with. My probably, you know, subconsciously why I've moved to the UK in the first place. Um, now, the expectation was that it was filmed here and it was a film because many things are filmed here, you know, yeah. Danton Abbey, Jane Austen, X uh, so many things, so many things are filmed here. The reality is that you guys love Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm sure it's a tourist thing and like to get money, but like there's Harry Potter is on like once a month on TV, like the whole seven films, eight films, seven, eight films, eight films on every week. Uh, there's always a new edition of the book published. There's always, <laughs> it's sometimes playing at the cinema, so many tours, merchandise, uh, everything. Like it's, it's permeated, which as a fan, this was the most, probably by my best surprise, my best reality of this list is, um, how much you guys love Harry Potter, because it's maybe as much as I love Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, my next reality is the NHS. Now I think this might be marred slightly by the pandemic. Um, I have Medicare in Australia, um, so it's a national healthcare service mirrored off the NHS. So I came in with my expectation of it being the same. Um, the NHS is better in terms of it's a, like a, the uh, Medicare in Australia is a bit more privatized than it is here. And the NHS is great. And that was a fun surprise. So I was like, but not that much of a shock. I was like, okay, cool. That makes sense. The original is always better. Um, what really shocked me was the patriotism people have with the NHS in England. Um, I think the NHS is like the most loved institution, like more than the Royal family <laughs> in the UK, which I fully, I'm incredibly pro uh, socialized healthcare. So that was like great. And then obviously with the pandemic, you saw the rainbows in the windows and thank you NHS. And just as much as I think I have a lot of opinions on the clapping for the NHS, like obviously I'll clap, but like they deserve more, but you know what I mean? <laughs> but just, we were the only country that I know of, well, what, like Western white English speaking countries <laughs> um, that I know of that got out with pots and pans and made a noise for them. You know, uh, obviously we all, dealt with the stress of the pandemic, but I don't know if anyone came to the, came to the, the aid, is it the aid? I don't know. And if anyone appreciated the healthcare system as much as the UK did, they truly went above and beyond. Um, and I think most people, if it went to a referendum or a vote, would vote that nurses and doctors get paid more on the NHS, um, which is a hard thing to get people to agree to. So <laughs> speaks volumes. I will say, side note to that, something that is, <laughs> My expectation was that I could get a doctor's appointment. The reality is very different. Um, that is the one thing the NHS needs to fix. Um, getting a doctor's appointment is like getting an appointment with the queen. Like what? <laughs> I still haven't seen a doctor face to face since I moved here. I've had to call up for just like minor ailments, you know, bits and pieces. Um, and I've yet to see an actual doctor face to face. <laughs> so I was like, cause everything's like virtual phone calls. And I'm like, and then to even get that, you got to call up like right at 8.30 chaos. I truly, that's my one big feedback is, can I please get an appointment? <laughs> one good thing with Australia is that we really don't have high uh, smoking rates. Like it's truly not a thing. We had a very aggressive anti-smoking campaign. It obviously worked. So my, I've come to the, I've come to Europe and the UK before and I was like, okay, smoking is more than here. Um, so I kind of went in with that expectation that there would be smoke, more smoke. What I didn't expect is that it would be marijuana. <laughs> I can't leave my house without smelling that. No matter where I am, I even live on the outskirts of London now. Like I barely, you could barely call me a Londoner. Um, and I still smell it. And if I go into London, it's everywhere. I just, I never expected it to be the prominent smell. <laughs> Who'd have thought? I came in with the expectation that all, all Brits were polite and pleasant, which is not wrong. But the reality that has slightly varied from that is I underestimated how friendly Northerners are. They truly would just chat to you out of nowhere. And I'm from London, so I'm assuming they're trying to kill me. Um, but they're just being nice. I want to talk about my dog. <laughs> Super cute. And then my last uh, expectation in reality, which is so funny, is that 
everything is so much greener and I know that's obviously because of the rain and like compared to the high temperatures and lack of rain I'm used to I remember vividly I came to the UK I was like 22 something like that and we were on a bus tour out to Stonehenge and Bath and I was on the coach and I was looking out at the motorway at the side of the road and I was like turned and this was in like June so everything was green and all the wild flowers were out and I turned to Daniel and I'm like it's just so green it's just so much color in Australia the side of the road is always yellow um, basically if you're not actively watering something it will be yellow or brown I always make the joke that if you leave like the metropolitan of Sydney it's like going into the first half of the Wizard of Oz like everything is sepia you just look at the country and it's yellow and dry and brown um, so I just remember looking at the side of the road at this like piece of like next to the motorway being like even that's green <laughs> and I love it and I love it so much but yeah so that is all for this video that is um, my expectations versus the realities of moving um, I could definitely make a part two to this so do let me know in the comments below um, if you want a part two if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up super super helps me um, and remember to subscribe if you want to see more I am ramping up for uh, my Christmas content which is going to be in depth we're going to go you're gonna be sick of me you're gonna be sick of me with what i've got coming up <laughs> thanks so much for watching <laughs>